Just, can I stop? Because I checked this morning. I double checked. I was pretty sure, but I double checked anyhow. And all of the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, and all of the Bible, there are no internet pastors. <laughs> no. I wasn't quite sure, but I double checked. I don't know how old Al Gore is, so I double checked. And there are no internet pastors. No, nope, no, nope, that would be a big fat zero. There's no internet pastor, you know, from New York. There's no internet pastors from Ohio. There's no internet pastors from Washington. And there are no internet pastors from Arizona. Zero. Come on. No, zero. Because you see, what the whole thing about the local churches, or one of many things, is that you fellowship together, you work together, you deal together, you deal with problems together, and you realize I have brothers and I have sisters and we're all human and we're trying to do this thing together and we got a pastor that we love and my pastor may not be perfect, but he's the man that God has placed as an authority in my life. And when you start comparing yourself, your pastor, to some internet pastor, you know, like maybe some guy in Texas or New Hampshire or Arizona. Do you know, if you ever study false religions in America, almost all of the big time, and there's a lot of little ones that, you know, Mickey Mouse ones, but false religions in America, do you know, it's really stunning. There's kind of two things that really kind of start them down the wrong path. You know what those two things would be? First, most of them start with uh, setting the date of Jesus' return. That just seems to be a real fast way to start a false religion. I don't know why. Do you know the second one? A confounded view as to who Israel is. Yeah. So many false religions come from people who spiritualize Israel. Come on. You say, well... When the Bible talks about Israel, what's the Lord talking about? Israel. Israel. <laughs> That's what he's talking about. So when the internet pastors say from North Dakota, or why not Costa Rica, or Arizona, wants to be your pastor, you better go to the Word of God and say, I'm supposed to have a pastor in 1 Timothy that meets qualifications. I'm supposed to have a pastor according to Titus that meets qualifications. I'm supposed to have a pastor that I have a personal knowledge of, and I know his testimony, and I know that God has put him in my life, and I know, I know the Internet is amazing. But you just can't reach your fingers through the World Wide Web and know that man. So that's why in all the Bible, and I double-checked it, there are no internet pastors. Say, so, well, I got an internet pastor. Then you're not following the Bible. Right. So get rid of your internet pastor and go to a New Testament local church. Get yourself baptized, become a member of the church, start giving, start serving the Lord, start being faithful. And when your pastor is not 100% perfect, you just laugh and say, well, neither am I. And by the grace of God, you just say, I'm going to serve the Lord because though I may know my pastor is a normal guy, I may know my pastor is one of us, I may know my pastor, and for all of his successes, you know, he's got a fault or two, like he's got me as a church member, that's his biggest fault. And, and I know my pastor may not be as cool as that guy is. On the internet and he may not be as funny as that guy on the internet and he may not come across as arrogant as that guy on the internet and maybe my pastor hasn't been arrested like that guy on the internet and maybe my pastor's not on the news making a fool of himself every night on the internet and maybe my pastor's not disgracing himself on the internet but he's still my pastor 